and welcome to your horoscope for June of 2020. We're Libra this month. We've got 60% of the planets in retrograde activity, which means this month is definitely slowing down. And I think it's a big important deal for you this month to have the time with the slowdown because you've got a month and a season coming up that is very 10th house heavy, which means career, soul level calling, who you are in the world, what you're known for, the gift that you give to us. So what you do is very much so in shift and in flux this month. And it's going to continue on to have that shift for about six months. So I think it's a really critically important month to get your mind right, to slow down, to have a second to reevaluate if you're on track with where you'd like to be going, right? Sometimes we just have to stop and look around, survey the land and say, okay, I think I'd like to study this so I can go this direction. Or, you know what, I don't think that or believe that anymore. And now you're free to go another direction. So it's definitely a month where I feel like the heavy amount of, in, of retrogrades definitely influences the global world around us, but it also helps with you shifting in that global world and even in your private world so that you can be really on course with where you want to be right now. And I want to be clear too. When we talk about forecasts every month, it's not always about change, fix, be different, make it better, make it better, make it better. These are subtle shifts in energy sometimes, right? This month, I think they're a little bit bigger and we see them play out for six months and they create shifts in this be known and what you do for work sector that are bigger. But it is just about tapping your awareness into the avail availability to shift should you be ready and sometimes the universe just kind of cosmically pushes us along the way but it's also an opportunity to walk with the universe as opposed to being drug you know so i just want to be clear there it's not always a fixed libra oh the newest thing is coming up this is an awareness of the energies that are around you because they're subtle they are they kind of come in and they come out and dissolve just as easily. So if you can catch them and work with them, that's the point of the horoscopes, okay? All right, Libra, let's jump in and talk about what's happening this month. First of all, first and foremost, your ruling planet Venus, as we do come into the month, is still in the energy of retrograde. It's in Gemini. So this is still working in your ninth house space. So as your ruling planet is retrograde, sometimes we feel a bit quieted, a bit more muted. But also one of the things I can tell you as a fellow Venetian that tends to happen for me during a Venus retrograde is that I just feel like my focus is a little bit different. Like even a little bit of my own little rose colored glass comes off. And instead I feel like I want to be magnetic and magnetize in a different way. We're going over relationships. We're going over finances. We're going over you're going over ninth house things. You're publishing, you're marketing, you're broadcasting, your expansion out into the world. Your faith is a very big thing that you will have been looking at with this Venus retrograde over here as well. So just know as we come into the month, the ruling planet is still in retrograde and it's all right. It just tones you down just a little, but at the end of the month, I think the lights come back on and you're like, Libra, here I am. You know what I mean? So as we get to the fifth or the second, excuse me, of this month, we're going to see Mercury coming into shadow time to get ready for the retrograde. So it means that Mercury is going to start slowing down so that he can station retrograde. Now, this is going to be happening in your 10th house. So career changes begin right here, right? And, and if you are not working, you're unemployed, you're retired, this is a great energy for just your review. And what are you doing every day in the world? What is the gift that you're giving? to the world? What is your soul level calling? And this can be as simple as what you're known for, right? Were you married and now you're not married? So you are known as something different in the world. Were you single and now you're a parent and now you're known as something different in the world? So who we see and know you as in public, in the world, this is going to be the time where some evaluation, some thinking, some shift is going to become available. But first, the energy slows down. So become a little bit of aware, right? What are you starting to see in these shifts in your industry even or in your job or in how you show up day to day? Start looking at that on the second. We'll review it between June and July. 
On the 5th, we've got a full moon lunar eclipse happening in the energy of Sagittarius, and this is lighting up your third house. Now, this is interesting, too, because first of all, the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. We need to make a shift. We're going to shed a whole bunch of light on it here, but it's so much light and so much shift to your insides that it is also going to pan out for about six months. Sagittarius is this energy of the big idea, the big mind, right? Like all of the big picture, grand and optimism, right? And the third house is the house of our smallest thinking. And so it lights up your third house, the small thinking, the details, how you communicate, how you perceive things will become extraordinarily different, Libra, over this next six months. What is your perception of things? But I also think because Sagittarius is very big picture, this gives you the opportunity in the third house to practice that, you know, public speaking class, take a class, take a training, begin learning something that you've wanted to study. I, if you are a college student or you're a student of some variety, this is a wonderful eclipse for you to um, maybe even you take an educational um, shift right? Like there is a little bit of a, a disruption in your education in some way, but it maybe creates a, a pathway shift in some way, shape or form. So I think that's a wonderful energy. This eclipse as well is t gives me the idea that if you have contracts, you're trying to buy a house, sell a house, redo the lease, you've got anything you need to negotiate. This is going to be a strong energy for you. We are in high retrograde. If you're working on something that was already in the works, I think the energy is strong for you here at this lunar eclipse to see all the details make sure you've got the big picture in mind but also catch the details that you need now if this is something that is new and coming to your table i would tell you even though mercury is not in retrograde on this day this eclipse is intense it's an intense amount of energy right we kind of lose our balance we lose our focus so just make sure if you're working on something new right now you keep receipts you have somebody else look over it with you to get the fine print all of that good kind of stuff okay just make sure your communication gets to be as straightforward as is possible okay on the 18th, Mercury will actually take that retrograde in the energy of Cancer and will stay there all the way until July 12th. So now we're officially in the review of the career spot, tip top of the chart of the 10th house. And it's interesting because a lot of the things that I think and how you show up or the work you do now are not so intellectual. They're very much so colored by your emotions. Do I feel good about this? Do I feel good about who I am and what I have to give. So you will be continuing that kind of theme as we go all the way through the rest of this month. Now on the 20th, we're going to have the sun come into the energy of cancer and we welcome summer here in the north, winter to our friends who are in the south. So this is a nice season change, but we're in retrograde. So I don't think we feel the full season change really until we get into July. But ultimately, the 10th house is stimulated to take action here, right? Then we're going to welcome in just on the 21st, the new moon coming into cancer, where you're going to plant your of intention but this is not just a new moon that's going to last for four weeks this is a new moon solar eclipse so you're going to plant your seeds of intention for something to bud over this next six months now i also think here because this is at a critical degree zero degrees of cancer it is the indicator that at the solar eclipse not only are you driven by a lot of emotion but you're driven by this sense of security or family or support at this particular moon. And you're looking to create that in your work and in what you do, right? You're looking to really do or be a part of something that feeds, that nurtures. But this particular eclipse may be giving you the energy to say no to something that is not feeding you or you don't feel like helps you feed others, so that you can over the next six months say yes to something else so plant your seeds of intention but remember you may have to say no and put something down first before you really get to take off with your yes as we move a little bit more into the year okay on the 23rd neptune is going to take a retrograde and be retrograde all the way until the end of november now neptune is going to retrograde in the energy of pisces which lights up your sixth house when neptune is forward we kind of we have the space for some daydreaming, right? It kind of softens our reality and things like that, right? But as Neptune goes retrograde, it's like, boom, concrete reality. So in the area of your health, which includes mental health and well-being, as well as your daily health um, regime that you're taking on, right? It has to do with how you care and how you are of service to other people. It also has to do with just mundane daily things, the work, brushing your teeth, uh, the little schedule, the people 
got to go everywhere. What's the schedule? The daily routine falls in here as well. So it's very concrete. So what I can tell you is while Neptune is retrograde, well, it's going to be working to have you create a new vision of what you'd like this area of your life to look like so that you can have that in a material sense as we come into November. Right now, it's also going to make your reality a little distorted and a little heavy because it's like this doesn't work for us or does this work for us? Does this way of caring for my body work for me? Does this way of showing up for other people work for me? It's going to be a lot of questions about that. And there's a lot of creativity that I think gets involved in that um, as well. So the strongest use of your energy here is going to be imagine a daily routine. Imagine a health. Imagine not that your body looks a certain way, but that your body is healthy and sexy and, and built to do what you need it to do, right? Like create a different vision around how you can get to the goal you're trying to get to. On the 25th, ruling planet Venus comes out of retrograde. It'll be out of retrograde at five degrees of Gemini. And this is going to light up again, this ninth house space, except for now, everything you learned, everything you looked at, does this educational plan have value for me? Does this training have value? Did you take the training during the retrograde? And now it's up to your ability to make money or make social contacts, or did you make social contacts? And now you guys can really activate as Venus is out of retrograde. Either way, Venus here in Gemini has a strong emotional intelligence um, component to it, and it's making you magnetic in this area. So publish, market, broadcast, put yourself out there, put that book out there, get that YouTube channel going, um, teach that class, whatever it is, delve into faith delve into that faith. Oh, it is beautifully magnetic. I think that Venus and Gemini is the space where the head and the heart make the longest journey. This is the longest journey, right? And they get to be on the same page in a very diplomatic, balanced, harmonious kind of way. On the 28th, Mars is going to enter into the energy of Aries. Now, Aries is your seventh house energy. It's right across the street, the opposite energy. So Mars is action, energy, assertion, movement. We're doing things. But it's also your desires. Now, the one thing that Aries does is it trusts its instincts. So I would tell you, while we've got Mars here in Aries lighting up your relationship zone, conscious chosen relationships, be sure to trust your instincts around some of these relationships, right? I would tell you here, um, because Mars is firmly rooted here, if there are actions that need to be taken in relationships, if there are conversations that need to be had, if you need to nurture some relationships in order to have them be healthy and well and on track, this could definitely be the time where you find yourself being very busy and doing that. And also, I just think it brings a little bit of fun into relationships as well because the energy is there. It's moving. It's like, yeah, let's do some things. The other thing is, face-to-face, zoom-to-zoom, virtual, whatever, you could just be having more contact in relationships. Now, yes, Mars sometimes does walk a fight up to your front door. And if you need to have the fight, if the thing needs to happen, if there needs to be a little bit of heat on the other side of con some conflict for it to resolve, Mars will definitely do this. But trust your instincts when it comes to relationships, to contracts, to things like that. Now, the seventh house is also the house of your open enemies. You know this person doesn't care for you or you know that you don't care for this person. So truly, if something needs to come out, Mars is the energy to make that happen, okay? As we get to the 30th of the month, we're going to see Jupiter and Pluto coming together again for the second of their third retrogrades, of retrogrades um, conjunctions that we're going to see. Now, as they came together the first time in April, they were both indirect fashion. So they were both moving forward. And as they came together, they said, you've got a desire and we're going to give you drive, focus, willingness, action, and the ability to see why you would change this fourth house area of your life, home, family, real estate, property, your internal foundations. Literally, even you've got all this career energy going this month, Libra. If you're not happy with what you do and you're like, I want to move to a different place to be able to do that, or I want to work from home to be able to do this particular brand of work, this could be the energy that you started creating that in April. So think about it. In your home life, in your home zone, in your own psychological foundation, your emotional security, what did you start working on in April? Because here, as we come to this conjunction in June, they're both retrograde. So it tells us that you're going to go back over those plans and those actions and those designs in order to keep, you got to adjust them in order to keep going. So you could go be, be going back over that plan. You could be like, oh, you know what? 
I did move and I don't like the move and I want to go back home. Whatever it is, Jupiter and Pluto here have you in review of an exact portion of something you were already working on, but this time they show you, Libra, that you've got an immense capacity to overcome your challenges and be efficiently and effectively and driven and successful. And I think that that is a beautiful energy to be leaving this month on. Now we will check back in on the progress that you've made with this bad boy when we get to November. So you've got three kind of little check-in points, do the thing, review the thing, flourishing, right? So just kind of know the pathway there, all right? Okay, Libra, it's a busy month. There's a lot of energies that are shifting. If you can clear your schedule, give yourself a break this month anywhere that you can, especially around the eclipses. I think that is entirely useful. Spend some downtime if you need it and kind of watch, take a wait and see attitude on fair amount of things this month. Watch, step back, wait and see what happens and then act, okay? All right, you guys, I've got people lined up for the eat and greets, and I am so excited to bring these other astrologers to teach with you. I know Rick Levine and I are coming up teaching you a little bit about transits. Terrence Gardino is on the way. Maurice Fernandez is coming. Gemini Brett we saw. I mean, just so many people have said yes to these eat and greets, and I, my heart is so full over that. So I hope to see you at them and in them, okay? Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next month. Love you, Libra.